Hello and welcome to my channel, The Curious Coder. I've seen that one of the biggest struggle that people face with Spring Boot is that they don't know where to even start. And even if they do start, then the next problem is that they don't know what's the right order of studying all these different topics. Because honestly, Spring Boot has a lot in it, right? So to solve this problem, I have created a complete Spring Boot roadmap and uh, this roadmap is for everyone whether you are preparing for interviews or whether you want to build a real world Spring Boot application. And the best part is that I already have created several videos regarding all the topics that I'm going to discuss in this roadmap. So as we move along the roadmap, I'll keep on adding the links to these videos so you can easily check them out. All right, so let's get started. The very first step is learning how to create a Spring Boot project. For that, the best and easiest way is to use Spring Initializer. This is the standard way most developers start their Spring Boot journey. Now once your project is created, the most important file you'll see is the pom.xml file. This is like the backbone of your project because it manages your dependencies, your plugins and the project build configurations. So take some time to open your pom.xml, explore what's inside and understand how it impacts your project. Once you're comfortable with the setup, the next step is creating your first API. This is the most basic building block of any project, no matter which language or framework you are using. To begin with, you don't even need a database. Just take a simple class, say student or employee, and start performing CRUD operations on it. That means fetching employee data, adding new employees, updating the employee details, or deleting the employee records. For now, just use a simple data structure, like a list or a map, to store your data in the memory, this is more than enough to understand the flow. While doing so, you'll cover a lot of important Spring Boot annotations like at the rate get mapping, post mapping, request body, and so on. This hands-on practice will give you a strong foundation. Then it's time to take the next big step, connecting your project to a database. This is the point where your application becomes truly end-to-end. -end. Because in reality, the purpose of almost every API is either to fetch data from the database or to write data into it. So by connecting your application to a database like MySQL or S2 database, you will have a full fledged Spring Boot project in your hands. After this, it's all about learning different components and adding them as per the requirements that come your way in real projects. The next topic you absolutely must learn is IOC and dependency injection. This is not just another feature, it's the very foundation on which Spring Boot is built. You need to understand what the IOC container is, how beans are created inside it, and then how those beans are used through dependency injection. Without a proper grasp of this concept, honestly you can't move any further in Spring Boot. So this is where you are done with all the basics and must know concepts. From here we move to the intermediate level. Now there are two paths you can take. One is the practical path. If your goal is to learn things that help you build real enterprise level projects, then go this way. These topics are more hands-on and these are the kind of concepts we actually use a lot in day-to-day -day coding. The other is the interview path. This is more about theory and the kind of questions that are frequently asked in interviews. But please do remember, in interviews, you can be asked from either side. Okay, so yes, prioritize what you need right now, but don't skip the other part. Because at the end of the day, you want to be a developer who not only clears interviews, but also knows about how to deliver real projects. Alright, so let's first explore the practical way. So the next thing you need to learn is controller, service and repository. In almost every Spring Boot project, we divide our code into three layers, the API layer, the business layer and the database layer. And that's exactly where annotations like at the controller, at the service and at the repository come in. Understanding these layers will give you a clear picture of how a real Spring Boot project is structured. Now since you have already made a connection with the database, this is a good point to understand how JPA works. We use JPA to interact with the DB in a clean and object oriented way. There are other approaches as well like Hibernate or plain JDBC, but my recommendation is just start with Spring Data JPA because it's the latest and it's widely used and also it's much easier to understand. At this stage, don't go too deep, just focus on the basic CRUD operations and simple queries so you can get comfortable with how your application talks to the database. You can get a gist of annotations like add the rate entity, add the rate table, column and so on. 
Once you are confident, you can explore advanced features later. Since we are already working with the database, this is the right time to get introduced to at the rate transactional annotation. It is heavily used in real world projects because it helps manage database operations in a safe and consistent way. At this stage, don't dive into complex concepts like propagation types or isolation levels, but just understand the basic use case of at the rate transactional. Now it is the right time to explore environment specific configurations. In real projects, we don't run everything with the same setup. We usually have different environments like dev test and prod. Spring makes them easy with profiles where you can define separate configurations for each environment and switch between them effortlessly. In this step, you'll be introduced with application.properties file, which is where all the magic happens. Now environment setup has two parts. Spring profiles help you configure environment specific properties. And the next step is learning how to actually use those properties inside your project. That's where annotations like add the rate value and add the rate configuration properties come into play. These annotations are part of almost every project you'll work on. So you must understand them properly. Then you can start looking into exception handling as well, because this is also an integral part of any good project. In real world applications, things will go wrong. There will be invalid inputs, database issues, or maybe some unexpected errors. So instead of handling them randomly, Spring Boot gives us a way to manage everything in one place using a global exception handler. This makes your project clean, consistent, and professional. Now, speaking of writing clean, consistent, and professional code, this is a good time to look at Lombok. It's a neat way to avoid boilerplate code like getters, setters, and constructors. The best part is it's a very small and easy topic to cover quickly, but it adds a lot of value. And trust me, almost every professional code base uses Lombok. Next, it's time to look into interceptors and filters. These are powerful tools when you need to process requests before they reach your controllers or maybe responses before they go back to the client. Things like logging, authentication or request modifications are often handled here. Knowing them well will give you much control over how requests flow through your application. After interceptors and filters, the next thing to focus on is logging. You should learn how to create loggers properly instead of just using system.out.println. In Spring Boot, we usually work with SLF4J for logging. A clean logging setup helps you debug issues and handle errors. And it's something every professional project depends on. Along with logging, your system also needs proper health checks and monitoring. That's where Spring Boot Actuator comes in. It gives you production ready endpoints to track things like application health, metrics, and other important details. This makes your project enterprise ready. Next, you can start with mappers. In any real project, you often need to convert between different objects, like from an entity to a DTO or vice versa. Writing all that code manually can be repetitive. That's where mappers come in. Using tools like Mapstruct, you can automate these conversions and keep your code clean and maintainable. Almost every professional Spring Boot project uses them. Now, once you have covered all the essentials, it's time to move to some advanced features. First up is pagination and sorting. In real projects, you rarely fetch all records at once, especially when tables grow large. Pagination lets you fetch data in manageable chunks, while sorting helps you order the results based on any field. Spring Data JPA makes both of these very easy to implement and they are features that will come handy to you if you learn them properly. Another important feature to learn is scheduling. Many applications need to perform tasks automatically at specific times, like sending emails or cleaning up your old data or maybe generating reports. So Spring Boot makes them easy with at the rate scheduled annotation. It allows you to write cron expressions so you can run methods at fixed intervals. It's a simple feature, but very powerful in practical projects. Now in a microservice driven architecture, your application might need to communicate with other services. REST client helps you in that. It lets you make HTTP calls easily from your Spring Boot application. Whether it's fetching data from another service or sending some information, learning how to use REST client is essential for building applications that follow microservice architecture. Then move on to caching. In real world applications, some data is requested frequently and fetching it again and again from the database can slow things down. So caching lets you store such data temporarily so your APIs respond faster. Spring Boot makes this easy with annotations like at the rate cacheable and it also works with providers like concurrent hashmap, caffeine or redis. 
So it's a small addition that brings a big performance boost. Next up is Spring Security, one of the most advanced and important feature of Spring Boot. It is essential for protecting your application and you must learn this one in depth. In real world projects, you need to control who can access your APIs and what they can do. So Spring Security makes it easy to implement authentication and authorization. And it integrates seamlessly with features like JWT, OAuth2 or basic login systems. Learning this will give your project a secure foundation. Finally, it's time to look at cloud. Modern applications are often deployed on cloud platforms like AWS or Azure. So learning how to integrate your Spring Boot application with cloud is essential for building scalable and real world projects. Understanding cloud deployment and services make your applications production ready and enterprise capable. In the end, you must learn Kafka integration. Applications often need to communicate asynchronously or handle large streams of data. Kafka provides a high performance messaging system for this. So one should at least learn how to integrate it with Spring Boot for at least producing and consuming messages. Now that we have covered the practical hands-on features, it's time to switch gears and look at the interview focused topics. These are the concepts and questions that are frequently asked in Spring Boot interviews. Some of these may overlap with what we have already seen, but the focus here is on theory, understanding how things work under the hood and being able to answer questions confidently. So you can prioritize based on your upcoming interviews, but eventually it's worth knowing all of these to be well prepared. So I'll quickly list down the questions. You can start with the difference between REST controller and controller, then the difference between Spring and Spring Boot, and then the difference between application.properties and application.yaml file. You can also learn about at the rate qualifier and at the rate primary annotations. You should know the multiple ways of dependency injection, like setter injection, field injection, constructor injection, and so on. Then there is a cyclic dependency problem that is asked frequently in the interviews. You can go for more advanced questions like what is the role of at the rate Spring Boot application and what are the different annotations that it comprise. You should also understand the internal working of dispatcher servlet as it is the heart of any Spring based project. Next question would be bean scopes. In Spring, beans can behave differently depending on how they are scoped. Understanding these bean scopes like singleton, prototype, request and session is very important from interview point of view. Another common topic is understanding JPA versus Spring Data JPA versus Hibernate versus JDBC. You need to know the differences, what each one provides and how they simplify database operations and when you would use one over the other. Okay, this shows your understanding of data access layers in Spring Boot. Finally, there's the circuit breaker problem. This is about handling failures in microservices gracefully. So you should know why it's needed and how it prevents cascading failures and how Spring Boot supports it with libraries like Resilience 4J.